There's not some God over there, like in Bruce Almighty, going, hmm, 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 I've given you so many chances, and you've blown it. You know, there's no presence that's like hanging over you, putting pressure. We talked about that today when our, our discussion over there, our couples session, that, that there's really no pressure being exerted on anyone. It's just that if you start to identify with the ego, and you cling to that ego construct, it can feel like the universe or the Holy Spirit is pressuring you. But really that's not, that's just an interpretation. It's not like there's really any, God's not like putting the squeeze on you like, okay, get it. <coughs> You're going to get this enlightenment thing or else, you know, there's, that's not really going on. I have a feeling like, if I dare open such, that's my feeling. And I, I'm not ready yet for that. It's just at some point my mind will like, you know, I, I know this. I, I have the feeling that that's the way it should be. Yeah. The world is to do here is like preparation for it. it affects my mind in ways I don't understand now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, practically speaking, it does feel like there's there's a sense of readiness and preparation that goes on, not in reality, but experientially, you know, we've talked about <coughs> the way that it seems to go. Okay, I'm getting more ready, more prepared. But readiness does not imply mastery. Uh, mastery is a whole different thing, you know, to, even when you start to grasp the metaphysics of what I'm talking about, you know, you could say, mm, I'm getting, I feel more ready. But mastery is a whole different thing. Mastery is like actually going into application and into full application. So that's, that's a beautiful thing to remember. You know, if you feel like the temptation to judge yourself, be hard on yourself, is readiness does not imply mastery. You know, that's really a whole, a whole different experience. These are all just steps along the way, so we just use these words because, you know, it's, it's practical. There seems to be stages, there seems to be steps, and that was the most gentle way that a plan could be devised, so to speak. Really the plan is simultaneous, it's really just an instant, but as long as you believe in time, it has to seem to involve stages and increments, and that's what people seem to be experiencing is they feel they're in certain stages. And you can't really figure it out. I mean, I've seen people go to the course and they go back to the teacher's manual and they start to read the stages of the development of trust and they go, where am I? Well, one, two, three. <coughs> oh, feels like I'm on all five simultaneously. It's crazy, you know, it's like, but you, it's still that mind wanting to kind of put itself in some kind of position in linearity and really it's pointless, but it's going to do what it's going to do, so you don't have to fight it. I can't possibly offer anything more. That it's, it's totally maximal <coughs> and that, that you will perceive what you believe. And as long as there seems to be limits on, on a belief system or limitations in the mind, then you will perceive whatever you perceive. You know, this, this is not about trying to have like an avatar or a, a personal savior. Uh, I have said over and over since you've heard me speak it many, many times that enlightenment is not personal. I've said it hundreds of times that there are no enlightened persons. I've even gone so far as on record to say that Jesus wasn't enlightened and Buddha wasn't enlightened. That the mask. You were enlightened on your Facebook page. Yes. I, I speak the presence, but. But it's, it's who chooses to identify it with David, you see. It's this voice, when the voice said, I and the Father are one, uh, I had to go through, I was raised in Christianity, so I actually had to go through a forgiveness process where I had a grievance with Jesus for years for saying a line in the Bible. Uh, the line was, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Uh, I had a grievance with Jesus because of that line. 
I, I heard that line in the Bible and I said, ah, how dare you? How dare you make such a statement? And you know, guess whose problem it was? It was the mind that perceived that there was a man speaking it. You see, it has nothing to do with persons. I don't care if it's on Facebook and, and it's written about enlightenment, it's like you still have to make a decision. Is it coming from a person or is it coming from the divine? And really the question is, is, is everything part of that oneness and divinity or are there still persons? As long as you see me as a person, you will not know who I am and you will not know who you are because we are the same one. So it's really, really elementarily very, very simple. But as long as you choose to perceive it from a personal basis, no amount of evidence will, will convince you of, of peace and joy. You know, Jesus was always good where he was like, he was like really not into signs and wonders, you know, even with healings, he would say, tell no man. He was really trying to keep it, keep this personal, you know, adoration at a minimum. He wasn't trying to heal a bunch of bodies, you know. The word gets out, oh there's a guy over there in, in Nazareth, that's, or in Jerusalem, or wherever he was, and he's healing bodies, and then have a flock of bodies go there to heal. He was teaching a much greater message, and the message that I'm sharing is, is not that you can become a better person, or a healed person, or even a healer. I'm just saying, it's a message that there is a state of mind that's, that transcends this world completely. So, you know, the mind will perceive what it believes. That's just the way that it works. If it perceives an enlightened person, that's just a construct. If it perceives that a person is not enlightened, that's just a construct. If it perceives that there are many enlightened persons, that's just a construct. In the end, it's just a matter of letting go of all the constructs and saying, hmm, I just want an experience and I'm really interested in not holding on to any constructs.